I'm going to officially post my top 10 for Mortal Kombat at the moment, after the balance patch and the supposed balance patch. And supposed final patch. And basically, I will explain to you what my top 10 list in this game at the moment is and why I put them in that place. So, the first, like, 10th and 9th place is going to be very, very debatable on who you want to put in there. So, try to remember this is all my opinion. And don't try to bash me for this, okay? So, number 10 was really, really, really hard for me to choose. Since, uh, it's not really, there's like a lot of different characters that deserve the number 10 spot. And I actually put in Possessed Ken Kenshi. Well, just Kenshi, but you know, mainly Possessed. Balanced isn't very viable, same with Kenjutsu. I would say balanced is probably Doors variation. I mean, Kenjutsu has a 50-50 that makes it like a lot better, but balanced does have zoning, which is decent, I guess. But possessed, on the other hand, is just <laughs> a whole other thing. He's like the new war god and everything. He also has teleport for, teleports for mobility, and he also has decent zoning. So I put him at number 10. Because of those main reasons, I mean, just the teleport loops and gimmicks, uh, the 50-50s, and the fact that the low can launch, and the fact, and he also has, like, a top two armor in the game, which is the EX Overhead Demon, that's plus five, you can't jump over it, and honestly, you, you can run under Wake Up to make it, like, past your body, but you, if you see them just run on your Wake Up, you can go for push on Wake Up, that's it, or EX push. Because this doesn't have much arm. I mean, the EX over at Demon also doesn't have much hits of armor, so you can go for EX push instead. So that's where you vary your armor choices right there. Uh, number nine, Katana. I mean, lots of people have her higher on the tier list, but in my opinion, she is a little bit overrated. You know, she's number nine. And I'm going to explain it because both Assassin and Bro Storm are very similar. They're both very solid variations of good pressure, stagger. I mean, Katana overall has really good staggers. Um, zoning is also really strong. And her mobility is also very, very great. Uh, lots of chip damage and... How do I say this right? Just a lot of chip damage and Oki setups on Assassin, while Royal Storm is more of a consistent mobile and anti... What's the word? She, um, Anti-meta, I would say? No, no. Like, she just gets rid of some stuff that might not be... Very important, but it will very help. I mean, it will help very well in the long run. Like, against Melina, she can reflect the size, the machine gun shots from full auto Jackie, and a bunch of other things that will actually help her in the long run. And, of course, she has EX, but that uh, has... How do you say this, right? It's like, it's arguably better than the e EX Assassin Strike, and it's also oh, setting up for zoning. So, yeah, uh, more in full... This is a very weird variation, like it doesn't have as much meaningless damage as the other two, unless you're in the corner, but it does have very, very good zoning, and she is very, very slippery, because like, she has a bunch of her stuff that's now safe, like, her Shadow Kick is minus 6, but has a lot of pushback, and the Glaives are now like minus 8, I believe, EX Glaive is plus 8, but, you know, there is that one thing about the fact that they can actually backdash the gap, or jump over it if they time it well enough. And, you know, also armor, but you can also bait that. So, Katana overall is very, very strong. The only thing I would say that, you know, doesn't put her higher on the list is the fact that she, her 50... I mean, her overhead doesn't launch. And the fact that she... Ha, her D dash, of course, has holes. And... She has just... He just she just has too many bad matchups, in my opinion. Like, she loses to... Pyro, in my opinion. Um, she loses to Jackie. She loses to Melina. She loses to Smoke and Sector. She loses. Um, who does she also lose to? I mean, overall, she just loses to a bunch of the high tier characters. I mean, in my opinion, Jackie is S tier. So I'm just going to put that out real quick. Overall, she just doesn't do very well. I mean, very well in the meta. So, that's just my opinion. Um, 
Next is number eight, who I actually have as Ermac, and this is only because of Mystic. The other two variations are very strong. I really think Mystic is by far the best variation. Um, Mystic just has ridiculous defense, and overall is very, very consistent and safe. Because he is a character that has, you know, the safe push that lots of people are complaining about. Arguably the best armor in the game. The second place, of course, being the over the head demon by possessed. But Mystic is a very, very key variation. He has a lot of staggers and an arsenal of anti airs. And you just can't really do what you want against him. He really conditions you to play a different neutral game. That That is how strong. That is just like how strong he is in this format or meta. Why it sounds like I'm talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, but anyways, he does like of course he has the forward fr or free 50/50. He also has the back free 2-1 or back free 4, which is low low or low overhead, and the overhead say 50/50. You can also backdash or possibly poke after it, and you know of course he X push afterwards. He also has a lot of very neutral controlling strings like the forward free 4 and the back one 2-4, which you can also stagger with. Which is a back one two in forward three into you know a 50 50 a grab anything he just has a lot of and a lot of tools for the defense and offense and just dominating the neutral and making you play a different neutral game so number seven we have melina all right so melina is across the board is very viable all three variations are very strong even though i don't think like piercing has good zoning and really good footsies, staggers, but I personally think that Ravnus and Ethereal are way better. I mean, not way better, but better. Now, Ethereal and has like really, really good pressure, and she does have the invincible wake up that you can, of course, full combo punish with if you chip guard them. She is very mobile because of that, and overall, she can just exploit every gap in the game and full combo punish it. Something that sometimes, like, she can do the regular fade instead of the forward fade to combo punish almost every gap in the game. Unlike what Smoke can do, where he can only phase forward or back. And then, of course, Ravnus has those tip throws and pounce mind games of the fact that the pounce is minus free, so you can do lots, lots of things afterwards, like an EX row, a back dash, a, a poke even. She is very devastating up close. So coming up in number six and just scratching the number five list is actually going to be Sonya. And I'm going to say this be because lots of people really thought that Sonya got butchered, but then they realized that Sonya is still very good. And, you know, Special Forces is somewhat viable, but this is mainly, it's mainly Demolition and a little bit of Cover Ops. Because Cover Ops does somewhat help you for those matchups where you struggle to stay in. Kind of why it plays. And then amazing amazing ways of i mean amazing tools off the grenades because the grenades of course is like it's just a 50 50 on whether or not you want to poke or press a button afterwards or respect it because if you respect it then they can just do whatever they want afterwards they throw the grenade but if you don't respect it they can just blow up the grenade a little bit delayed or immediately and you'll get full combo punished and of course she has the frame uh the ex grenades oh my god those things are literally like just fucking overpower it's not overpowered but like it's such a strong ex move because after you're low on grenades or whatever you can just set up pressure i mean after after you lose one grenade you can just like get a guaranteed 50 50 off of doing like so like one two one into ex grenades and then you can just do a 50 50 afterwards or a grab and you can you just get a lot of guaranteed tools and it gives you a free reload if you want, or a corner carry, whatever you want. She just has a lot, and a lot to fear in the close-up when she gets in on you. And overall, she like you can't really zone her as well because of those grenades. Those things are literally like what KP calls them, neutral stoppers. So, yeah, that's why I have her at number six. Uh, number five, we have Sub Zero. Kyle is viable, but this is mainly Grandmaster. I mean. I don't really, I'm not sure if I have to explain this, because lots of people do know why he is very strong, but I'll care to explain, since this is what the list is about. So, Grandmaster has gotten better pressure now that the, 
I mean, now that the regular shatter, and possibly you could use the extract too, but regular shatter is minus five, and you can backdash or clone, even poke after it, armor, whatever you want. And honestly, it's just really, really, really better now to where Grandmaster can be more of a keep away character. He can just get away after doing his Oki. And, you know, being one around the corner, because he has that clone that just stops you from getting away, and you just have to hold everything that he does. And once more, he can also play the defensive game and just be a bitch and hide behind a clone for ice bowls, which is really annoying. And Cryo, of course, helps for, uh, if, you, if you're a sub-loyalist, and I guess you can use Cryo for the bad matchups of Grandmaster. All right. So next is number four, and a lot I know a lot of people are gonna bash me. My god, this kid is number four. And lots of people are gonna say I'm downplaying because of that. Uh Chinook is my main, but I will give you the reasons why I think he's number four and why I'm not downplaying. Or why I think he's number four. So Imposter has been known to be the variation that just dominates a lot of characters in the game. And you can cover Bone Shaper with some of your bad matchups, but let's just get this straight, right? Once when you get in on Imposter, he doesn't really have much options to get out, alright? Shinnok's defense is kind of ass, I'm gonna just put that out there. His defense is really ass. Once when you get in, it's hard for him to get out. Um, Bone Shaver is a very, very read-heavy character. Like, he requires a lot of hard breeds, unless you play a very scr- Like, uh, like playing him at a high level requires a lot of hard breeds, alright? But if you play him get in Scrubs, then it shouldn't be a problem, really. But overall, the thing is that you just gotta make a hard read after every single time you do your opponent. That's about it. While Imposter, on the other hand, he can just brain deadly get that trance up 50 50 to death. Like he gets so much damage off of that trance, it's unbelievable. It's like he gets like a 25% damage boost, I believe. And the teleport is just really annoying to handle with, especially once when they get those incinerators down. But there's not really much to explain about Shinnok other than his imposter's offense is really, really, really dangerous. So next to number three, um, you'll, you're also going to argue with me for this one, but I put Cassie. And I'm going to explain to you why Cassie, because she's kind of like Chun-Li, where she has a ton of resources. Like, I, I, I picture her as the Chun-Li of this game. Because she does have the incinerator guns that can deal with the zoning, have hit advantage, lets you run up if you're getting zoned out. Um, you know, the e she has a restand, she has a 50-50, she has a s bunch of like different strings that are, are safe in plus, so you can press buttons afterwards. And you can ex- and although they, some of them do have gaps, you can actually exploit those. I mean, you can punish your opponent for exploiting the gaps, which is- ridiculous and she has that chip battle of course from the ex guns it does like 11 percent chimp damage i believe so it's just ridiculous she has too many options and of course she has those tricky strings where there's like a blow or overhead snuck inside the string so you actually get caught like the, unless you get you know Unless you get a lot of Cassie matchup experience, you you will get hit by those strings. But, I mean, Hollywood is just a character that has too many options. And I forgot to mention that some of her strings are like... like wait, no, I did mention it. But, like, do you not know that she can also poke afterwards? Like, her poke could be guaranteed against most characters. If you do one of those plus or neutral strings, you can just do a poke unless they armor. Or maybe they poke faster. Like... That's just it. She dominates the up close most game, and when she, you have her kept away, she can easily get back inside. Now, uh, Spec Ops, you know, has hard to blockable setups. That is just annoying. And Brawler has those tick throws and over in the low of your strings, like a back two one. You could just do back two overhead. You could do standing free free overhead instead of standing free free down one. You could do uh, forward free into overhead instead of forward free free. But yeah, that's it. Uh, number two, obvious character, Smoke. I mean, lots of people are wondering 
I mean, lots of people are probably not wondering why 